if you follow the same routine every single day, day in and day out, you will likely burn yourself out. Not every woman has a day 14 ovulation. Let's check his location. Hello friends and welcome back if you're new here my name is Jills and today I'm doing a little bit of a different video I'm doing a little days in my life vlog I'm doing an ovulatory phase days in my life vlog so if you are familiar with cycle syncing then I'm going to kind of just show you guys a few days in my life what I do how I treat my body during the ovulatory phase in my cycle women are not the same as men and our hormones change every single day and we have four different cycles in our menstrual cycle the menstrual phase the follicular phase the ovulatory phase and the luteal phase and if you are completely unfamiliar with cycle syncing then i do recommend you go watch um, another video of mine all about cycle syncing i will put it up here and down below um, but we are digging into the ovulatory phase which is one of my favorite phases and i am a big believer that a woman's ovulation and ovulatory phase can be one of her superpowers. So first let's talk about what happens in the ovulatory phase. So the ovulatory phase is a short phase in a woman's cycle where she ovulates and where her body releases an egg. So a little bit before a woman ovulates, her estrogen peaks, it's the highest it is throughout the entire month. And then in the ovulatory phase, her luteinizing hormone also peaks. And that's what encourages her follicle to push out an egg. And that might sound not that interesting, but our hormones really affect how we feel. They affect our strengths, our weaknesses. They affect our needs, our desires, all of it. And if we treat ourselves the same during every single phase in our cycle, especially if we are having a natural cycle you know, without hormonal birth control and all that, then that is doing ourselves a disservice. And eventually, if you follow the same routine every single day, day in and day out, you will likely burn yourself out or it will just feel wrong to you for some reason. And that's because we are not built for a daily routine. We are built for a monthly routine. Our hormones operate in a 28 day or about a month long hormone cycle. So I do track my cycle using a basal body thermometer. I take my temperature every single morning and I track it in an app called Kundara. I've been using that app for a very long time. I use that to tell when I am ovulating, when my period is coming and all that kind of stuff. I honestly don't even really need to track it using a temperature, using, using a thermometer anymore, but I like to do it just so I can have that data for myself. I can tell when I'm in my ovulatory phase, like I can tell by the way that I feel. I'm in touch with my body enough that I know what it feels like to be in my ovulatory phase. So in this video, I'm gonna take you through a few days in my life. Today is Wednesday, and I think I'll kind of keep going through Saturday, just like off and on and show you some things in my life, what I'm doing, how I'm taking care of my body and chatting about the ovulatory phase and how I utilize this phase in my life. So before I get into the rest of my day and the rest of this vlog, I do just wanna talk about the ovulatory phase like at a high level and what that means for our body and how we tend to feel. So the ovulatory phase is when we tend to have pretty high energy. We tend to have a lot more like ambition and drive. We tend to feel like a need to be much more social and get out there. We usually don't wanna just like hang around our house, you know, alone the entire time. We crave to be a little bit more social. We crave those fun experiences. We crave more of that outward energy. Whereas in the luteal and menstrual phases, we have more of that inward energy. We want to go slower, nourish ourselves, spend more time alone. The follicular and the ovulatory phases are our outward energy phases. This is where we naturally give the most. This is when we naturally produce the most, like we're the most productive. And not because we feel like we have to, but because it just feels more aligned 
in these phases of our cycle, especially in the ovulatory phase. We tend to be able to handle harder workouts. We can usually eat lighter meals and still feel good. We can even handle more stress, which I'll talk about later. Our libido tends to be highest because we are ovulating, but I will get into the details of all of this kind of stuff, but I did just want to give you like a high level of what the ovulatory phase usually means. So let's get into my day. I am actually going to film a video right now. So if you see the video that was released before this one, I'll be wearing this outfit. I love this dress. It's from Free People. I wore it on vacation and it's so cute and comfy, um, but I'm going to film a video today that should be pretty quick and easy. And I actually have a very exciting little surprise for that video and I'll just put it in this video as well. But I have like these cute little um, hoodies, hats, and a mug that are like all about soft life vibes. Um, I'm just so excited to release them. I always wanted to just make something fun like that. It's not for like making all these big bucks. I just had a really strong desire to make something in real life. You know what I mean? Like something that everyone in our community could have. Like we can all have cute little soft life hoodies or a soft life hat. And I'll put the link for that shop in the description below in case you wanna check it out. By the way, Piper always wants to be in the back there. She loves that spot. And Bo, my other dog, has not wanted to be a part of it every single time he goes to another room. So he's still sleeping in the bedroom. So I have two dogs. It's just only one of them likes to be in the video. Hello friends and welcome back. If you're new here, my name's Jill. Did I not press the record button? I forgot to press the record button. Hello friends and welcome back. If you're new here, my name's Jill. Okay, I just finished filming and my files are exporting right now. But let's talk about work and productivity in the ovulatory phase and what that actually looks like for me. So the ovulatory phase is the time in my cycle where I naturally want to work the most and I want to be the most productive and get a bunch of stuff done. And it's not because I feel like I have to. It's not because I feel like I need to utilize this energy spike. It's because I naturally have more of that drive. I naturally want to be more productive. I feel a lot more fulfilled doing things and getting things done. Yes, because I do naturally have more energy. I try to utilize that and get more done, but I'm not just doing more for the sake of doing more because I can. I'm also doing more because it feels good. So here's what I do. As you guys know, I'm obviously a YouTuber and in our cycle, we can work more efficiently if we do certain things during different phases in our cycle. So the ovulatory phase is a really good phase for communication and networking and writing and all of that. I noticed that I also have really high creativity during this time as well. And I like to utilize that. Like it's really fun to be creative and get a lot done during this time. Whereas if I were to try to work the same amount and have the same amount of creativity right before my period as I do now, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel aligned. That's the best way to describe it is it doesn't feel as aligned. It's not me just being lazy in the luteal phase and not wanting to do anything. It's just me working with my body. So everything related to creativity, writing, and communication is really great to do during this time. And that is a lot of what I do. That is almost all of what I do. So I really try to work a lot more during this phase in my cycle and get more done and maybe batch a few more videos. Like instead of doing one video a week, but maybe doing like two or three videos during this week, if I can, if I have the capacity for that. And I will try to focus all of my intention, all of my energy in my work into more of those creative things, into more of videos and all of those types of things. Whereas there is a lot of like back end type of work that's involved in um, YouTube and that kind of stuff, you know, editing and things like that and uploading SEO, all those things. I don't like to do any of those things during this phase if I can avoid it because it's just not a good use of my time. That wouldn't be utilizing my strengths. Now I know like the work that I do is incredibly flexible and I can basically do whatever I want whenever I want. So 
I do know that I have a lot more flexibility than some other people, especially if you work a more corporate job. But if you can, the ovulatory phase is a great time to do networking, meetings, presentations, writing, anything creative, anything more outward facing. And because we have that natural energy spike in ovulation, we can get a lot more done in less time. So even though I might be doing a little bit less in like my luteal and menstrual phases, it all evens out. So I do a lot of writing and filming specifically during this time in my cycle. And so you might see in this vlog that I'm working quite a bit and that's just because I enjoy it during this time. I want to, I like getting ahead. I am very fulfilled by that. I'm not making as much time for stillness and bubble baths and all those things because that's just not what my body wants. That's not what my heart wants during this time. That's not what is fulfilling me during this time. I also feel like my thoughts are a lot clearer during this time, so I like to utilize that. And also, sometimes I can feel like, sometimes it feels like in my ovulatory phase, I'm on drugs a little bit. And what I mean by that is like, you know, before I became a holistic girl and <laughs> all those things sometimes i would occasionally take adderall in college to study and things like that and and it kind of feels like i took a very low dose of adderall in my day like i can focus a lot harder i have a lot more ideas and i'm excited by it i don't know if anyone else has that experience or if that's just me but sometimes i actually do feel like i'm on drugs <laughs> ovulation is a superpower y'all even though work and productivity is a lot more fun and easier during this time i also like to make sure that i am still saving time for my personal life and you know doing social things and having date nights and things like that because that's just as important and these peaks in our hormones that we're experiencing, they also make those things very fun and very rewarding. And I'll talk about that later. So now I'm going to go through all the video clips I have and send my editor all the stuff so that she can edit it. She edits almost all my videos except for my vlogs. I still do those myself. But so I'm gonna go work for a bit and then I'll catch you later. Also real quick though, look how pretty these flowers are that I got from Whole Foods. I'm obsessed with these. They had the most beautiful roses and I recently learned how to open up roses and I just I love them they're so beautiful going to a Pilates class right now. Um, I need to leave in like five minutes, but I just wanted to say that Pilates is a wonderful luteal phase activity and I am in my ovulatory phase. That doesn't mean that I can only do Pilates in my luteal phase. Like the luteal phase and, and menstrual phase is great for slower, low impact workouts where the ovulatory phase is great for more intense workouts, more cardio-based workouts. But um, I was out of town this past weekend and I just haven't really worked out in like a little bit over a week. So I kind of want to ease into it. So this is the perfect example of while yes, cycle syncing tells me to do really hard workouts right now and push it more and do more cardio. That's not what my body wants today and my body wants to ease into it and take it slow. So I will always listen to my body over what cycle syncing tells me to do. So I'm going to this Pilates class, got my little sweatshirt on. Yeah, I've been really trying to get back into reformer Pilates. I've been really liking it again. I haven't done it for a few years, so I've just been doing like beginner's classes, kind of getting back into it again. This one is a beginner's class, which is good because that's just what I want. But the Pilates studio I go to also has a candlelit Pilates class at night and it's really wonderful. So basically my plan for the rest of the day is to go to this Pilates class and then cook some dinner and then I need to just do a little bit more work for maybe 30 minutes or so and then chill, hang out with Cole, read a book, go to bed. We should probably go to this. Baby, I just did Pilates. Like, I gotta take a shower. Shower real quick. Put, put some pants on. Put some pants on and give Caitlin a call. Apparently we are seeing Young Gravy tonight, which is like some rapper. He's like a funnier rapper, I guess. Um, I don't know him that well, but um, basically, okay, I just need to kind of 
mini curl my hair real quick. Um, I just hopped in the shower and this is just like a total last minute thing, obviously. We are going to go just like last minute and show up for like 30 minutes or an hour and then go home. But um, great example of the ovulatory phase being social and just kind of being more spontaneous and doing things last minute. I'm trying to like be a little bit more social these days. I feel like this summer I wasn't as social as I wanted to be. And you know, I love spending time alone, but everyone needs to hang out with friends and be out in the scene sometimes. This is how I do my hair very quickly when I need to. This is a really old curling iron and I took off the clamp and I just use it as a wand. And I just add like waves to my hair. So basically this is the rest of my night. I thought I was gonna have a chill night, but this sounds fun and I'm excited. So now I'll probably have a little bit of a later night, but that's okay because life is meant to be lived. I never wanna be that person where I'm so intense with like my health habits and routines and, and bedtime and all that, that I don't actually fully experience life and enjoy life. Whoa, there's some wave to it. There we go. So I am off and I will see you tomorrow. So in the follicular and ovulatory phases, that's when our estrogen is higher, right? And estrogen is an amazing hormone. Estrogen actually makes us less susceptible to the negative effects of stress. Like basically we can handle more stress during those times when our estrogen is higher. So that's something really important to keep in mind. Like when we are in the follicular and ovulatory phases, we tend to feel okay with more stress, with more things on our plate, with more things possibly to worry about. But when we move into the luteal and menstrual phases, we are much more susceptible to stress. Our body is much more affected by stress and we have to be cognizant of that. Now we can't always just live our life entirely by our cycle, but it's something to note. It's something that we need to be aware of for our body's sake, for our mental health sake. So I'm going to get ready and then make myself some lunch and then get into work for the day. Okay, just got ready, I did some work. I'm actually wearing the same shirt as yesterday because why not? And let's have another chit chat. So one thing that I wanna mention and that every woman should know is that not every woman has a 28 day cycle and therefore not every woman ovulates on day 14. And that is very important. So if you are trying to, let's say, prevent pregnancy naturally and avoid your fertile period, you can't just assume that, oh, I ovulate on day 14. Cause that's actually quite rare. You have to track yourself and your body. So for example, I usually ovulate more around like day 18 or so. My cycle is a little longer than 28 days normally. Every woman's cycle is different and that's why when I've said in the past on like some videos or in some TikTok videos I'll say that a woman can only get pregnant during a small portion of her cycle there's about like six fertile days or so because sperm can live in the body for up to like six days or something so about like six to seven fertile days and then I've had some people comment and be like oh well I got pregnant while I was on my period and Yes, you absolutely can because not everyone ovulates on day 14. So if for some reason you ovulated much earlier that month, then if you are intimate towards the end of your period, you don't use protection and the sperm lives in the body for up to around six days, that means you can totally get pregnant. And that's why it is so important to know our bodies, not just for fertility sake and preventing pregnancy or achieving pregnancy, but just so that we can know our bodies. Just something to keep in mind that like not every woman has a day 14 ovulation. Most do not. You have to track your own cycle and tap into your own body and know where you're at. So now I'm going to do some writing and things like that. But honestly, I don't feel very inspired in my house right now. So I kind of want to go somewhere else to go do that. 
I don't know where though. And then I may go to a dance class tonight. I was thinking about it. I'd rather go to the one tomorrow night, but I can't because I have dinner planned. So I might go to the one tonight, but I am quite sore from Pilates last night. It was a beginner class, but it didn't end up being that beginner. So I'm either going to go to the dance class tonight or I'm gonna do something just on my own, like maybe go for a jog around the neighborhood or something. The weather today is like phenomenal. So I'm kind of leaning more towards that approach. It'll be quicker but I am feeling a little bit better and like I want to do something a little bit more cardio intensive. So I'm going to follow that and do that later. Now, one of the reasons why we can handle harder or more intense workouts during this time in our cycle is that like I said, we are more resilient to stress and exercise is a stress on the body and exercise increases our cortisol levels. But when we're in the luteal and menstrual phases, our cortisol naturally increases much more quickly and easily than when we're in the follicular and ovulatory phases. And when we have too much cortisol and when we have too much of that stress hormone, that causes a lot of inflammation in our body. And even though we might think that we're doing good by working out and working out hard, we can actually do ourselves damage if we push too much, especially during the times in our cycle where our body is really sensitive to that. So like right now, I know I can handle more of those cardio intensive, harder workouts, but in two weeks, those won't feel as good for me. So if you are like a big workout person, like exercise is a big part of your life, maybe you're like, you know, a gym goer or something, a big gym girl, think about your workout cycle as like your monthly cycle, your menstrual cycle, right? When you work out and you build strength, you're not just going, up and up and up and up and up and up. You go like this, right? You go up and then down a little bit, up and then down a little bit, up and then down a little bit. You build that strength and then you let your body restore. You build that strength and then you let your body restore. So think about those waves as like each cycle. So those peaks, that peak intensity, those times where you wanna push the hardest and maybe like use the most amount of weight or PR or whatever you wanna do, that should be timed if you can with your ovulatory phase because you will have most likely the most energy and the most strength. So you can imagine the start of that wave is like your menstrual cycle and then it rises up through your follicular phase and then it peaks in your ovulatory phase and then you slowly go a little bit back down through your luteal and menstrual phase and then you start back over again. So instead of riding those waves as according to someone else's workout plan, listen to your body and listen to the different phases of your cycle and be in tune with that and ride those waves in accordance with your own cycle, your own peaks, your own valleys. There will be times in your cycle where you are naturally stronger or you'll feel stronger, like your ovulatory phase. And there will be times in your cycle where you don't feel as strong, usually right before your period. So it's good to know this information so you're not trying to push during the wrong times. Now I'll also say when it comes to working out in the ovulatory phase, group fitness classes are also really fun because in the ovulatory phase, we're naturally more social and we kind of wanna be out there, be with friends, so sometimes group workout classes can just be really fulfilling. But at the end of the day, always listen to your body first when it comes to working out or just taking care of yourself in general. Like just because you're in your ovulatory phase, that doesn't mean that you have to go do some intense hit workout. That's not what that means. Listen to your body first, but use your cycle and the phases of your cycle as a guide. The guys have started their work for the day for the built-in cabinet so it's probably going to be loud for the next seven hours eight hours um, but i'm excited to see those i don't know when they're going to finish but i was just kind of getting them set up and making sure they know what they're doing and all that now i'm going to work for a little bit um, i'm probably gonna hang out in the basement with my dogs because they have to be put there when we're doing construction or else they're gonna like cause a ruckus. Um, so I think I'm gonna go down there and work from there for a little bit before I get ready because Cole and I are going to dinner tonight at one of our favorite restaurants, but we are going with some of his 
friends and coworkers who have never met. So I want to look fresh and pretty. So I'm probably going to wait to get ready and wash my hair for the day until after lunch. And then I'll get ready and do all that stuff. So once I'm all ready and stuff, and hopefully it's a little bit quieter in here, I'm not sure if you can hear the pounding and drilling and stuff, um, then I'll hop back on and I'll talk about like personal life in the ovulatory phase and, and what that means to me. five o'clock and the guys just left so there's finally no sound and I got ready I'm ready for dinner except for my outfit we are going to a restaurant that we love tonight with some other people and I'm excited because I've been in the house all day and this is a great time to talk about our social life and our personal life in the ovulatory phase because that is the phase in our cycle where we are naturally the most social we want to be the most social this is a time in our cycle where it might feel good and energizing and exciting to meet new people. And this is the time in our cycle where date nights are really fun and it feels good to get dressed up a little bit and go out and do something fun, go out on the town. Like for example, I am an introvert and so going to dinner tonight, not just with Cole, but with three other people that I haven't met before, like in my ovulatory phase, that's fun, that's exciting. But if that's like a day before my period starts, like I can go, you know, it's it's fine, I can go, but it won't feel as exciting. It'll feel more like a chore. But so in the ovulatory phase, I love to plan fun things out, whether it's fun dinners out or just doing things with Cole that we've never done before or hanging out with friends more, meeting new friends, anything in the social sphere. I like to do a little bit more of that during this phase because that nourishes my soul. Like in the four different phases of our cycle, we have different needs and different desires, right? and in the ovulatory phase we tend to need more connection we crave that and so if we sit inside all day you know in the ovulatory phase that won't feel as fulfilling for us or even like if you work from home this is a great time to like go to a co-working space or a coffee shop to go work instead of just being in the silence of your home all day now i will also mention that this is the time in our cycle where our libido tends to be the highest because because we are ovulating, right? And so naturally, if you think about it evolution-wise, it makes sense that our libido is the highest when our body can conceive, just biologically speaking, right? And with that said, when it comes to intimacy, it's likely to feel a little bit better, I guess you could say, in this phase, as opposed to more like in your menstrual phase or something, because again, our body is primed for that. You know, like sex and intimacy and all that can really change throughout your cycle, your like needs and all that kind of stuff, what feels good, what doesn't, can change throughout your cycle. And if we're unaware of that, we might think like, oh, what's wrong with me? Like this felt good two weeks ago, but now it doesn't. And that's because our hormones change and our cervix actually changes positions and all of that. And if you want more of like a detailed video on not just your social and personal life, but also like sex and intimacy, I do have a video on that and I'll link it up here and down below. I go into more detail. But I'm excited for dinner tonight. I um, haven't been able to spend that much time with Cole recently just because he's been working a lot and you know doing his working things so he hasn't really been around that much so I'm excited to get dinner with him and then I'm hanging out with him tomorrow night as well so yay date nights. <laughs> One thing that's also on my mind right now that I just want to mention so I don't forget it in this vlog is that okay for me like I said, the ovulatory phase is when I generally tend to have the most energy and all of that. And so if there's ever a time like an ovulatory phase where I don't feel that energy spike and I don't feel like those good feelings, that good vibes, good mojo, you know, like more of that creativity and all that kind of stuff. That's when I know that at least for me, I don't know about you guys, but at least for me, 
that means that something is a little bit off. Like that usually means that I'm starting to get a little bit burnt out or maybe I haven't been supporting my body as much as I need to. But really it's just a big sign for me that I am getting burnt out or I'm at least heading in that direction. And so when I'm in my ovulatory phase and I don't feel good, like I don't feel that good ovulatory phase high, that is like a little bit of an alarm for me. Not that something is like bad, but it's something that I need to notice and take into account. And same thing how I talked about how our libido tends to be highest in the ovulatory phase because we're ovulating and fertile and all that. If I like don't feel that good healthy spike in that and if I don't feel interested in any of that kind of stuff in that phase that's another sign to me that my body is just feeling depleted and burnt out and i feel like as women these are things that we need to be aware of in our body and we need to notice these things and observe our body you know it's sad but we're just not taught about our menstrual cycle we're not taught about our health we're not taught about the four different phases and how we are more likely to feel we're not taught how to listen to our body but we really have to start tapping into our body our knowledge our intuition and really start taking agency and responsibility over our body and our health and our happiness and becoming aware of these things observing our body noticing its patterns this is how we become in touch with our body this is how we become healthier this is how we support our body better this is how we work with our body better utilize its strengths it's sad that none of this stuff was taught growing up but i feel like a new generation is coming and i feel like all of this kind of stuff is getting so much more mainstream and i think that's such a wonderful thing let me show you guys the progress that they made today on the built-ins so this is the progress that they made and I think they've already done a really great job. So we have the cabinets down here and then these are going to be shelves. So they have the shelves out, but they're not in yet. It's so nice to like actually start making your house a home instead of like when you live in an apartment and you can't change anything, you know, it's like really frustrating. And I, I love being able to make this like our place. And this office is, basically gonna be my office. I mean, Cole can use it if he wants, but um, he has like a whole office set up in the basement. It's very dusty in there. for a little over a three mile walk this morning. It was really nice. The weather again has just been phenomenal now that it's starting to cool down a little bit. Got dressed and now I am going to make some lunch. I think I'm gonna make some chicken. I think we have chicken in there. Probably just simple chicken and veggies and I think we have some leftover rice so I'll probably throw that on there too. Could do a salad. I have this leftover rice, I need to eat it. So I'm gonna do some chicken, some salad with little blackberries on it, just keep it simple, some leftover rice, and then I just have these little carrot sticks, so I'm just gonna do that. Let's get to cooking. I don't know what I wanna do with this chicken. I could throw barbecue sauce in it. That's always an easy way to make something tasty. And also I cook a lot with chicken thighs, not as much chicken breasts. I tend to like meat that's like a little bit fattier. I don't really like the taste of chicken breasts, honestly, very much. I'll do it occasionally, but I prefer chicken thighs. So I love this brand for like clean, healthy sauces, organic sauces. It's called Primal Kitchen. You might have seen it before on like another vlog because I cook with these a lot. They have really good ketchup and things like that. It's just a lot cleaner, good sauces. I have this in the fridge. So I'm just gonna use this. This is golden barbecue sauce. We also have Hawaiian barbecue sauce, which is really good. This one's my favorite, but I love cooking. You know what I like to do is this on top of chicken with cooked pineapple. That is really good. And then I'll usually like serve it with some rice underneath and some avocado or something. It's really good. But I'm gonna do this one today. And I'm just gonna pour it on. Put them in the oven at 400 for probably around 25 minutes-ish. But this leads me into a great little chit chat about food and eating in the ovulatory phase and what that tends to look like. When we're in the ovulatory phase, we usually feel like we don't need as like heavy as foods 
and we tend to be drawn towards like lighter foods and that kind of stuff tends to feel good and that's definitely the case for me i mean i love eating i love food but in the obligatory phase like i've noticed like i really don't like stuffing myself <laughs> not that we should ever like completely stuff ourselves but you know how like when it's like right before your period and sometimes stuffing yourself a little bit sounds good like not in an intense way i just mean like that feeling of being really full but like good healthy full like that feels so good to me in the luteal phase and then when i'm in the ovulatory phase like i don't want to feel that heavy like that just doesn't feel good and we usually don't need as many like carbs and things like that as well i always have carbs in my day but when i'm in more of like the follicular and ovulatory phases i usually do a little bit less like i obviously get carbs all the time through like you know some veggies and fruits but i mean like even with like rice and sweet potato like i'll still eat that for sure but i won't eat like you know large amounts of it will be a little bit smaller whereas in the luteal phase that's when i'll feel a little bit more of a pull towards like those good grounding carbs like more sweet potato and squash and all those things and even like pasta i eat brown rice pasta which is like naturally gluten-free so it's really just rice in pasta form but um it's really good um but i love pasta too before my period because it's just like very filling you know like that feels so good to me there now I don't want that. So I'm just doing chicken, veggies, a little bit of rice. Keeping it simple. Okay, it's almost ready, so I'm just gonna throw this in. Sauced up chicken. I also don't really crave sweets as much during this time, and so I generally don't eat that much like sugar or, or, or sweets or like treats or anything because I really just like don't care for them that much. I mean, they're always good, you know? They're always good, they're always tasty but I don't really ever crave them that much during this phase, so I just usually don't really eat them at all. My food is generally pretty clean when I'm in the follicular and ovulatory phases. It's a lot easier for me to eat clean, honestly. I mean, that's not to say that I don't eat like any treats ever in those phases. It's just like a lot less, and I just don't feel as drawn to them. We're eating on the nice wedding china today because um, we're out of the other plates. They're in the dishwasher. I'm just gonna throw together the salad. By a salad, I mean I'm just doing spinach and arugula and blackberries. That's it. I don't know if I should make a plate for Cole because I don't know if he's gonna be home. Let's check his location. Yeah, yeah. He won't be home for a while. He's far away. I'm just gonna make a plate for myself. I think I'm gonna add avocado too. You know what I've been watching a lot of recently <laughs> is Sex in the City. I never watched it ever in my life and i started watching it a few weeks ago just because i wanted to try like a new good like classic show like a classic girly show you know like i've watched gilmore girls so many times and you know a lot of those shows gossip girl gossip girl so good but i love like good classic girly shows from like i don't know what time period that is but that sort of time period like 2000s, you know? I just feel like that was such a good time. And in Sex and the City, like at least for the part that I've watched, Carrie, the main character, she doesn't have a cell phone and she doesn't even have like an email address. And I'm just like, wow, that sounds nice, you know? Like sometimes I'm nostalgic for those older times. And sometimes I wish I was an adult in those times where like we didn't have cell phones and we just live life and we didn't have Instagram and, and all these things. I mean, obviously technology has been like such a huge benefit in our life, but I also love the simplicity of not having that. And when you don't have that, you really find, or at least are forced to have community in your actual physical community. I don't know. So I really enjoy watching older shows like that. They just make me happy. Um, and that show is very entertaining and very funny. Basically the plan for the day is I would like to do a little bit of work just because I am feeling creative and I would like to use that. Um, and then I just kind of want to chill here, probably have dinner here, and then we are going to see Equalizer 3, which I have no idea what this movie's about, but Cole really wanted to see it. And I know Dakota Fanning's in it, and I like her, so um, whatever. We're gonna go see that movie at around like 8.30 or something, and then go to bed, and that will be the day. I also need to buy a birthday gift for my nephew. I'm gonna look for that right now while my chicken is cooking. I really wanted to film a video tomorrow, but I don't know if I'll be able to because the video that I was 
kind of like working on, like making an outline for, I got another sponsorship offer from a brand that I've already worked with that I really, really love and I definitely want to work with again, but their sponsorship would be great in that specific video randomly. So I'm kind of wanting to save that for that video. And this is balsamic vinegar, not wine. And so now I have to think of something else. I will say one of the hard parts about being a YouTuber is you always have to be thinking of new ideas. And I'm definitely not someone who's not creative, but I'm not someone who's like ultra creative either. It's never been like my specialty, you know? And it's funny because like, I actually have a ton of ideas. Like I have a huge list in the notes app of my phone that I just keep all of my ideas. Like it's just so long, but I have to feel like inspired and drawn to talking about it. If I'm not inspired by that topic, like I don't want to do it. And I don't care like how good I think it will do. If I don't want to talk about it, then I'm not going to make it. Yeah, because it's funny, like my old job, I worked in like clients and accounting and that was like a not creative job at all. And now I'm doing this, which is like, I don't know, I would say like a good bulk of what I do is creative. And I feel like as a YouTuber, I'm learning how to be creative again. Cause creativity was never fostered in me as a child. And that wasn't like something that was ever encouraged really. And I would always tell myself for the longest time that like, I am just not creative. Like I don't have any ounce of creativity in me. And then I realized as I got older that that's just wrong. And while I'm not the most creative person in the world, I do have creativity in me and I do like being creative. It's just the hard part with YouTube is that you have to kind of constantly be creative. And that's why I like to really take advantage of the auditory phase because I'm just naturally more creative so that I can be a little less creative in the luteal and menstrual phases because that kind of stuff is just so much harder for me in those times. This is the meal. Can you see it? Yeah. Chicken, rice, salad with berries and avocado, and some carrots, and I ate some carrots while I was cooking too. All right, Cole and I are going to go to that movie now, Equalizer 3. We are running a little bit late because of me. I just had a really big creative spurt and I had to write it all down and take advantage of it because if I don't, then sometimes I just lose it and then I get really sad. But I hope that this video was enjoyable. I hope that it was helpful. I hope that it was valuable to you. I hope that this encourages you to embrace the beauty of cycle syncing more and learn to love being a woman and learn to love the four different phases of your cycle. If you did watch this video in its entirety and you stayed until the very end, just know that I appreciate you. And if that is the case, leave some sort of like red emoji, like a red heart or like the fire emojis that reminds me of the ovulatory phase or like the dancing red lady, like the one with the lady in the red dress. That's like, woo, that's one of my favorite emojis. But let me know because I always like to know, especially for my vlogs. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time in my next video video.